This presentation is concerned with the associated features one encounters in a patient with rheumatic diseases. It's important from the outset that we bear in mind some, some considerations. First of all, the patient is the best witness of their disease. And so due importance has to be given to what they say and how they are related to us. The other important consideration is that rheumatic diseases often have features that occur in different systems and the patient may not necessarily link one problem with another. And this is especially the case if they occur at different points in time. It is therefore important that we have a framework which will allow us and permit us to gather all the information and it's only at the end of this information gathering that we will be able to see what is and is not relevant and integrate the various strands of data to come to a diagnosis with regard to their disease. Let's, let's look now at the reasons why we would try to gain all this data. The obvious Initial reason is informing a diagnosis, and this is particularly uh, relevant in our first encounter. But at the first encounter and subsequently also, we get information with regard to the severity of the disease. We can get information with regard to the impact of the disease on the patient's life. And we can also look at facets of the disease or features that might indicate extra-articular disease or disease complications. We can also identify targets for our therapy and finally we get the information with regard to the effect of drugs, both drugs we have used ourselves and drugs that have been used in the past. We get both positive and negative information with regard to their efficacy. We now get down to the main part of the presentation which is looking at those parts of the systems inquiry that are particularly germane to the patient with, with rheumatic disease. We look at trying to construct a framework that incorporates most of the features and complaints that these patients have. I've he put them under the headings of skeletal or extra-articular disease, eye symptoms, mucosal symptoms, skin symptoms, and then I've also included for completeness the major symptoms which are the traditional inquiry that one has in a systems review. Musculoskeletal system, apart from the joints, we consider the entities which are the areas of insertion of tendons into bone, sites of information that can occur in certain rheumatic diseases and cause problems, particularly at the Achilles tendon insertion and the plantar fascia insertion on the plantar surface of the heel or on the posterior aspect of the calcaneum. Entities can also be inflamed at the knee, the elbow and elsewhere. Tendon pain, tendon swelling and tendon sheath involvement can give pain, swelling and stiffness at a tendon, the wrist, around the ankle and at other sites. But included in this part of the framework, Raynaud's phenomenon, and it can be included elsewhere also. But I use it here as an extra articular feature that can occur in certain connective tissue diseases. Eye disease can be an important clue to the origin of rheumatic disease. And so inquiries should be made with regard to pain or redness in the eye, the presence in the past of conjunctivitis, and presence 
of dryness in the eyes. The next tissue to consider is the mucosal surfaces. And in this inquiry, one asks about dryness in the mouth, the presence, either now or in the past, of mouth ulcers. Ask about the urethral mucosa with questions with regard to urethritis and the lower GI mucosa with, in regard to presence of diarrhea or abdominal pain, thinking about inflammatory bowel disease. The skin also can yield di important diagnostic information and be the site of disease in a number of rheumatic diseases. So one needs to ask questions with regard to the presence of erythema nodosum, and this can manifest as discrete red raised painful lesions in the lower limbs, but it can also can be present as diffuse redness around the ankle, simulating ankle synovitis. Also ask about skin ulcers, presence of psoriasis in the patient or in their family, and the presence of photosensitivity either in the past or as a consequence of drug exposure. Finally, because rheumatic diseases can involve any or all of the organ systems, it is important that a routine systems inquiry also be undertaken, asking about symptoms in the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system, the gastrointestinal system, the genital urinary system, the endocrine system, and the neurological system, both peripheral and central. Finally, let me tell you the purpose of this short presentation was to indicate to you the extent of the inquiry necessary to adequately assess a patient with rheumatic disease. It has also shown you the need for such an inquiry. Now the presentation is necessarily cursory because of the time available and so I would urge you to explore anything you don't fully understand before seeing patients with rheumatic diseases. Finally I have left you with a checklist that might serve as an aid memoir in seeing patients in this situation.